Hello everyone, my name is Travis Roberts and this is my Azure Learning Channel, Seraltos. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Microsoft MVP, and have over 20 years of experience in IT. You can find me on Twitter or at my website. This is the third video in a series that covers the skills required for the Microsoft AZ900 Azure Fundamentals Exam. The following information covers describing the core Azure architectural components found in the skills required for the exam. I'll have a link to the skills required for the exam and the slides used for this presentation below. Please subscribe to this channel, click the bell icon for notifications of new content, and check out the new membership option. Keep an eye on the playlist for updates to this series. Your support is appreciated. Let's move on and review the core architectural components for Azure. Let's start with Azure AD. Azure AD is a cloud-based identity management service. Azure AD supports users and groups it manages access and security for your Azure environment. Azure AD is an identity solution for both Microsoft 365 products, such as Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. It's also a directory service that manages identities for Azure subscriptions. There's an important distinction for the two types of subscriptions in Azure. First is a per user subscription. This includes Office, Exchange Online, Teams, and other Microsoft Software as a Service products. There is a one-to-one -one relationship between a user and a subscription, also called a license. The other subscription type is a consumption-based subscription, and Azure subscription is consumption-based, meaning we pay for the resources used in the subscription. An Azure subscription is primarily made up of IaaS and PaaS services, Azure servers, networking, Azure SQL, and app services, for example. Sometimes, an instance of Azure AD is referred to as an Azure tenant. Azure AD represents an organization in Microsoft's cloud services. And because this gets confused so often, I'm going to quickly recap the difference between Windows AD, the directory service many organizations use on-premises, and Azure AD. At a high level, Windows AD is used to manage on-premises identities. It supports network-based authentication protocols such as Kerberos and NTLM. Azure AD, on the other hand, is used to manage cloud-based identities and supports modern authentication protocols such as SAML, OAuth, and OpenID. It's possible to replicate Windows AD identities to Azure AD in a hybrid identity environment. I have a course on udemy.com if you'd like to learn more. For now, we'll leave it at Windows AD and Azure AD support two different use cases, one for on-prem identities and one for cloud-based identities. When we create any subscriptions in Azure for a Microsoft 365 subscription or an Azure subscription, an Azure AD tenant is created. When a new Azure subscription is created, it's created within a management group. A management group provides a way to organize Azure subscriptions. It's a container used to set access permission and policies for compliance. Settings applied to a management group are inherited by all subscriptions and other management groups within that management group. A management group can be nested in other management groups, and Azure subscriptions exist within management groups. A subscription is an agreement with Microsoft to use one or more cloud services in Azure. It's a billing context, either by credit card with a pay-as-you-go subscription or with an enterprise agreement or other billing agreement. A tenant can have multiple subscriptions, and each can have different subscription owners. A subscription owner is the account with the most rights to a subscription. A subscription is also a security boundary. Permissions added to a subscription are inherited by all resources in that subscription. The next level of the hierarchy is a resource group. A resource group is a container for services or resources in Azure. A resource group contains resources such as app services, database, and virtual machines. A resource group is a logical container for services with a similar life cycle. So if multiple services were required for a web application, they could all exist in the same resource group. A resource group is also a security boundary. Permissions are set at the resource group, and those permissions are inherited by resources in that group. It can also be a billing scope. We can view charges for services in a resource group. In the end, we have management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and the resources they contain all in an Azure AD tenant that provides user identities for the Azure subscriptions. This gives us great flexibility in how we provision and apply policies 
on subscriptions in Azure. Next, let's talk about Azure Resource Manager. Azure Resource Manager, or ARM, is the latest version of the deployment and management service for Azure. We can interact with Azure in several different ways, including the portal, PowerShell, the command line interface, or CLI, and using API calls with REST. Each of these tools interact with the Azure Resource Manager for deploying, managing, and removing resources in Azure. With ARM, we can create declarative, reusable templates to create resources. This can be done with JavaScript object notation or JSON templates, Azure Bicep, a declarative language built for Azure, and an option that is simpler to use compared to JSON templates, or Terraform, a third-party infrastructure as code tool that works across many cloud services and on-premises environments. ARM provides the management layer we interact with when we deploy, manage, and remove Azure resources. When we deploy resources in Azure, the resources exist in a data center. Microsoft has hundreds of data centers all across the globe. We don't get to select the specific data center we deploy to. Instead, we deploy to a region. A region is a grouping of well-connected data centers. The data centers are close enough to limit network latency, but not so close that storms or regional power outages will affect each data center within a region. Microsoft tries to maintain a minimum distance of 300 miles or 483 kilometers between data centers in a region. Regions are well-connected and geographically close. There are over 60 regions worldwide available in 140 countries. Some resources, such as virtual machines, can leverage availability zones. An availability zone is made up of physically separated data centers within a region. They are well connected with a latency of less than two milliseconds. There is a minimum of three zones in any region that supports availability zones. For example, if we deploy two servers as a high availability pair in a region, those two servers could be placed in the same data center. If that data center experiences an issue, the service is offline. If we deploy them using availability zones in the region, the resources will be placed in separate zones where a pair is not at risk of a single zone failure. The important piece to remember with availability zones is that they're physically separate, well-connected, and in the same region. Each region has a well-connected paired region. A paired region is in the same geography. A geography is a geopolitical boundary for Azure services. Paired regions provide cross-region replication. The advantage of cross-region replication include region recovery sequence, sequential updating, physical isolation, and data residency. Let's say, for example, we have four regions in North America, East US paired with West US, and East US 2 paired with Central US. I'll leave a link to all the paired regions in the comments below. We have an application, application A, that runs on two servers one in each paired region. As a comparison, we have another application, application B, that's also on two servers in two different but not paired regions. Physical isolation limits the impact of natural disasters, civil unrest, power outage, or physical network outages. Let's say that all the regions went offline. Region recovery sequence means if that occurs, one of the paired regions will have priority in the recovery effort. So for example, if West US and Central US have priority over their paired region, application A would recover, but application B would not. Sequential updating means that a planned outage will run on a paired region before the other. So in the unlikely event that an update causes an issue, one region will be available. There's also data residency with keeping data within a geopolitical boundary. This maintains any tax, law enforcement, or regulatory requirements of that jurisdiction. That's it, my friends. We have reached the end of the Describe the Core Azure Architectural Components section of the skills measured for the AZ900. All slides are available on my blog. The link is below. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.